Mark Roper, a YouTuber with 65 million subscribers, may have just set himself up for a massive Lanham Act lawsuit by Tesla against him for the experiment that he set up in partnership with a LiDAR company. And the big irony of it is that the LiDAR company may be able to walk away scot-free from this experiment, leaving Mark Roper holding the bag for crapping on Tesla in an unfair manner. In this video, I'm going to break down everything that you need to know with what's going on, what kind of legal basis Tesla could have to sue Mark Roper, and the weird conflicts of interest that went into a video called, quote, can you fool a self-driving car? First and foremost, let's start with some of the shenanigans that are going viral but then we need to talk about the promises that were made earlier in the video. Take a look at this. This is the part that's going viral, but it only tells part of the story. You have a wall that is built out of styrofoam, and the wall is essentially a printed photograph of the background that would otherwise be there. Multiple times throughout the video, Mark Roper says Tesla uses a cheaper camera-based technology to detect obstacles versus LiDAR-based technology, which is more expensive, implying that Tesla's products are worse because they're cheaper and the LiDAR is better because it's more expensive. Let's listen in here to the final example, and then I'll get to what the promise was which could be the basis for a really big lawsuit. To the 40 miles an hour. And as the wall crept closer and closer without moving an inch, Holy crap. the question was if the Tesla would detect it in time to step on the brakes. And it turned out. Holy me. <laughs> So, as we can see, not only did Tesla not stop for the image of a wall, but then also hit a child that was behind the wall, which I think is just for more of a slam against Tesla uh, on purpose here to seem dramatic. I'm not exactly sure why the child behind the wall was necessary, but there was a promise that Mark Roper made that is actually really important here. Earlier in the video, Mark Roper told us the following. And I want you to see and listen to this very closely, right here. I'd be even nicer by using the more conservative autopilot on the Tesla for all the remaining tests. Wait a second. He's going to be nicer by using autopilot for all of the remaining tests. All right, well, this already creates some confusion and I'm gonna break that down, but let's just stick with that for a moment. He's going to use autopilot for all of the remaining tests. Let's see if that's true. In the creme de la creme, history first, Tesla crashes into a wall experiment. That's because he calls it the history first experiment where this is conducted. Let's see if autopilot is actually on at the time of the impact. Tesla up to the 40 miles an hour. And right here, we can see no driver assistance software is on, but that changes in just a moment. As the wall crept closer and closer without moving an inch, Holy crap. question was, there it is. Right here, Mark Roper reaches over with his hand on the bottom left of the screen there and enables autopilot. We could see that with the rainbow road and the blue lines. Let's see that a little closer here. Crap. Question was if the Tesla would detect it in time to step on the brakes and it turned out. But wait a minute, was it on before the impact? Well, based on the editing, this is what we see. Oh, holy me. Uh-oh. Wait a second. There's the wall. Right here's the wall. It appears autopilot is off again. Frame by frame, no autopilot as it goes into the wall. Now that's interesting because we just heard Mark Roper say for the remainder of the tests, we're going to use autopilot. And this is where a lot of people are getting suspicious. Was this potentially a paid partnership between Mark Roper and Luminar? After all, Luminar technology is clearly featured in the video because their vehicle is branded and what appears to be a Luminar employee is driving the vehicle. Now this is potentially brilliant by Luminar because Luminar shows up with their vehicle doing their experiment in their own vehicle and they never touch or talk about the Teslas. They're just showing their own technology. 
This is a brilliant wash the hands move by Luminar because Mark Roper could end up getting left holding the bag if Tesla ends up suing Mark for false and misleading advertising under the Lanham Act. We'll talk more about the legal basis for a potential lawsuit in just a moment, but look at this. On the Luminar website, they don't say, look, Luminar just beat Tesla. No, they say, Luminar, LiDAR tested by former NASA slash Apple engineer and current YouTuber Mark Roper. Click to check it out. And they I'm click in directly to the video, which is where Mark Roper even opens up the video saying he's going to use autopilot. Well, on autopilot going 40 miles an hour towards a fake Wiley Coyote Roadrunner painted wall, please. But wait a minute. In the frames we saw, autopilot was off. And take a look at this. In any Luminar shot, Luminar is driving the car. Whereas when it's the Tesla, Mark is driving the car and Luminar is nowhere to be seen. Maybe because Luminar knows that this is a legal hot potato and kind of unfair to Tesla. But take a look at this Luminar ex example here. In this, you'll notice the Luminar branding on the car, the LiDAR on the vehicle, and the person who's driving wearing a Luminar shirt, potentially because they're an employee. Wall of water started, LiDAR seemed to not slow down at all. Oh boy. <laughs> Until the last possible second. Another W. You can clearly see the Luminar branding. Now I just need the rain to stop. You know any good rain dances? Can just back up? Oh, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> and Luminar's driving. Now, wait a second. Luminar isn't disclosed as a paid sponsor in the video, but we do have a shout out. Thanks to Luminar for letting us test their vehicle. Luminar is obviously using this experiment to advertise their business, but it's kind of a sleazy comparison. Mark Roper is using this experiment to advertise his business get two free boxes with Crunch Labs or whatever, slash LiDAR. Crunchlabs.com slash LiDAR. Now this is fascinating because now you have two business interests benefiting off of a smear off of Tesla, which is quite frankly the basis for Lanham Act lawsuits. Again, we'll hit that in just a moment, but first you need to understand that Mark Roper may also be purposefully misleading folks on the self-driving features that Tesla has. See, when a lot of consumers hear self-driving, they assume, or autopilot, they assume full self-driving. But there are actually multiple different modes of Tesla driver assistance that exist. In fact, if you look at the channel Tesla How To, you can see a very simple breakdown of the features that Teslas have. First, they have automatic braking, which is, hey, we see an obstacle, we'll stop. Then they have traffic aware cruise control, which is essentially where you'll see a little max icon on the speed and you'll keep distance from other vehicles. Then you have autopilot, which also keeps you aligned in a road. And then you have full self-driving, which appears more like a straight line here. And full self-driving is more closely associated with, well, full self-driving, like a self-driving car. And full self-driving is never mentioned in the Mark Roper video. In fact, they simply say, hey, you know, we're relying on the cameras for the automatic braking, but that didn't work so well. So instead, let's just use autopilot for the remainder of the tests in the video. That's not full self-driving. Even though most people who hear that may assume they're talking about Tesla full self-driving, which could slam Tesla's brand, that's not what's actually being done here. They're sort of relying on the public's ignorance that autopilot is the full self-driving feature when it's not advertised as a full self-driving feature. In fact, on Tesla's own website, they break down the difference between autopilot and full self-driving. They say that autopilot comes standard for every new owner of a Tesla, but that there's a difference between autopilot and full self-driving features. That autopilot does come with traffic aware cruise control, but so full self-driving has navigate on autopilot and many more safety features associated with it. Beyond this, when you go further into Tesla's website, you do in fairness see that autopilot will come with features like emergency braking, but that full self-driving is their more advanced driver assistance software. So there are a few issues here because one, 
Mark Roper never describes that there's a difference between autopilot and full self-driving. They sort of leave that to the consumer to decide. And number two, they say in the remaining tests they're going to use autopilot, but then at the very last and most critical test, they don't use autopilot, at least what we could see based on the edit, which leaves a lot of people wondering, hey, wait a minute, was this designed to purposefully defame Tesla? Now, I want you to hear it directly from Mark, and then let's get into the legal problems and the legal bases for how Tesla could potentially sue. And I want you to think about this. Is Tesla even going to have to show damages for their case against Mark Roper? The answer may surprise you. And it's not good for Mark. But listen to these sections here for a moment. Just not in time to fully hit the brakes. Oh no! He was even a Crunch Lads fan! <laughs> Beating f Alright, we are up to speed. And with just simple cameras, the Tesla was speeding fast. Oh no! But did detect the kid. Oh no! <laughs> just not in time to fully hit the brakes. Oh no! He was even a Crunch Lads fan! <laughs> Now, if you're a Tesla owner, there is a silver lining because we were relying on the automatic emergency braking system to stop for the car. And because it assumes the driver's paying full attention while fully driving the car, it only hits the brakes when it's 100% sure there's a problem in order to avoid false positives. So the alternative is to use autopilot. And that assumes the driver isn't paying much attention. And while the downside is you get way more phantom braking and false positives, <laughs> that was ridiculous. The upside is you're less likely to be charged with vehicular manslaughter because you can see here on autopilot it actually stopped in time so i decided to be wait a second here's some more problems mark roper suggests that hey we don't want to use autopilot because there's more phantom braking but then they show videos from somebody else's youtube channel where there's an odd instance of well phantom braking and while that has been an issue in the past it doesn't seem to be a ubiquitous issue. At least in my experience, I don't deal with phantom braking. Maybe in the past it's been something that's come up, but it hasn't been a recent issue for Tesla. But notice how they say, hey, there's a silver lining. We don't only have to rely on the cameras using automatic braking technology. We can use autopilot, which assumes we're paying less attention. Uh, well, first of all, no, it doesn't. All of Tesla's products require you pay attention, including full self-driving. But that aside, Mark Roper doesn't mention the true silver lining, which is you're not even referring to full self-driving. You're going from the automatic braking technology to autopilot, while completely ignoring that there is a very modern technology called full self-driving, which would be much more fair to use in your future tests. But that's not what we get here nice and call the score one to one and then I'd be even nicer by using the more conservative autopilot on the Tesla for all the remaining tests. So now Mark Roper is going to do Tesla a favor and he's going to use the ancient autopilot technology, not even mention the full self-driving technology, but then again in the creme de la creme example he doesn't actually seem to use autopilot because it appears disabled right before the impact. Now, this really creates Lanham Act questions. And the Lanham Act has its basis in corporate false advertising. And there's a great way to look at it by seeing the definition of the law right here. And it's pretty self-explanatory. To bring a claim for false advertising, the plaintiff must show that the defendant, in this case, Mark Roper, made false or misleading statements as to their own products or another's. In this case, Tesla could argue that Mark made misleading statements that autopilot was designed for people who aren't paying attention and that that's the better product over just relying on auto braking. But he purposefully leaves out full self-driving and he purposefully leaves out that no, these products aren't designed for you not to be paying attention and then suggests that, hey, maybe that'll help you prevent being convicted of vehicular manslaughter, which seems like a very slippery slope illogical argument against Tesla. Now, if you go further into this, you see that, quote, actual deception occurred, or at least the tendency to deceive a substantial portion of their intended audience occurred. Well, in my opinion, I wasn't deceived. But then again, I'm also pretty familiar with Tesla's, and I could see that while the video was deceptive, it wasn't deceptive enough to trick me. But then again, 
That's not the basis for the law. The basis of the law is, quote, at least a tendency to deceive a substantial portion of the intended audience. And if you look on social media, I'll let you do that yourself. There are plenty of people quoting this example video from Mark Rober saying, wow, look how much Tesla sucks. It kills children. I'm being hyperbolic here to summarize it for you. This clip is going viral, but it misses a lot of context. And in my opinion, it would be very easy for Tesla to argue that the vast majority of people, or at least a substantial portion of people who watch this video are being deceived. In addition, is that deception material enough to likely influence purchasing decisions? Well, sure, people buy a car for safety and this feels unsafe. And nobody wants to be convicted of vehicle manslaughter, vehicular manslaughter. In addition, which is a very interesting line here, notably, the plaintiff does not need to show that they suffered actual injury from the defendant's false advertising. That's actually huge because it makes the argument that Tesla doesn't have to prove here are 20 people who didn't buy a Tesla because of this video. They simply have to prove that you have slandered the company in a way of false advertising and this has risen to the level of business tort because you ended up promoting your own product or somebody else's product which is exactly what happens in the video. He promotes his own product using this, frankly, defamation against Tesla to promote his own product while also promoting Luminar Tech. Whether or not Luminar Tech paid Mark Roper here or not may not matter. So I would make the argument here that Mark Roper is clearly taking advantage of an opportunity to utilize Luminar technology and LiDAR technology, which is pretty cool because he shows us and teaches us how his lasers work and even takes the laser technology to Magic Mountain to map out what Magic Mountain looks like, which nobody really knew what it looked like before that because frankly, it's dark when you go to Disney's Magic Mountain and he snuck a LiDAR camera at it. So I get it. He's making a fun video for kids to understand the difference between camera technology and laser-based technology, vision-based technology. The problem with this is he creates negative brand for Tesla by implying that the technology he's showing is Tesla's full self-driving technology. He literally writes, can you fool a self-driving car? But he doesn't actually use the self-driving technology in his experiment. Instead, he uses the autopilot technology to destroy figures of children and imply that if you rely on this technology, you could end up being subject to vehicular manslaughter claims. This is really problematic because if the test was done more fairly, it'd be tough for Tesla to have an argument here. But because Tesla's full self-driving technology was completely ignored, and in some cases, even their autopilot technology may have been disabled, Tesla could have a pretty big argument against Mark Roper here. So at best case scenario, this is unfair for Tesla and a true experiment should be followed up with the latest technology that Tesla has. Worst case scenario, Mark Roper could end up at the bad end of a lawsuit that I think Tesla would win in this case. Luminar might get looped into, their ca into the case for their involvement, but I actually don't think that Tesla would have a very good case against Luminar. And Luminar, I think, knows this because they purposely get out of any Tesla-related experiment. Kind of smart, but again, deceptive to millions of people.